Hi and welcome back to the workshop. This week I've got a couple of things to share with you. One is showing you some of the processes involved in making a wheel, clock wheel like this. Uh, so the, uh, the process of cutting the teeth mainly. Then we're going to take a uh, tour of the church tower at Ellesmere in Shropshire, which is where I'm from. So uh, we'll visit the, uh, the church and go up the church tower. This, this happened last Saturday. Uh, so we can see the Joyce turret clock movement and the bells and the spectacular views from the top. Thanks as always for following uh, along with these video logs. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and clicking on the subscribe uh, button down in the corner of the screen. Thanks very much. Bye. Got this um, wheel to cut. I'm using the Shawbin 102 to cut it as I usually do. Dividing head here and uh, uh, I've got a Thornton's cutter, which is uh, already centered and ready to go. And uh, the process of making the blank was to, uh, I actually have got some trepanned out brass blanks um, that speed up the process a little bit for me. So I used one of those and I drilled the center. I actually super glued it up onto, a, um, onto an aluminum super glue chuck first. And then, uh, I was able to uh, face it off and uh, true up the diameter, then put it in a six jaw chuck and uh, then I bored it out to six millimetres, which was the, uh, the size for this holder, mounted it up properly on the holder with the faced side uh, on the back and then I was able to um, complete the facing operation to bring it down to thickness and turn the diameter um, lock it all up solid on, the, on this holder and then we're ready to go to cut the teeth. So the, uh, the blank is to diameter, the cutter is centred, I've got it set for uh, cutting my uh, wheel of 100 teeth using the um, Shawbin dividing head here. So we'll uh, get on to cutting. Here's the cut wheel that I've just cut on the Shawbin 102. And here's a little trick for testing the depthing of a, a wheel before you've got it mounted on an arbor. You can turn a uh, tapered, excellent. You can turn a tapered um, arbor with uh, points on each end to go in your depthing tool. And then you can just uh, push your wheel on and you can get it, uh, you can get it to be, uh, run reasonably true in in this plane with a little bit of fiddling uh, but uh, but the point is it'll run concentrically so you can uh, then mount up in your depthing tool and you can test your depthing uh, before you've actually fitted the wheel onto the arbor
So that's the arbor and that makes it possible to uh, check the depth thing and check the mesh with the uh, replacement wheel against the uh, original pinion. Which in this case feels pretty good. Not perfect, but I am mashing a new wheel into an old pinion, so uh, I wasn't expecting it to be perfect. But uh, it certainly feels easily smooth enough to be uh, uh, to be a good working relationship between the the wheel and the pinion. This is the uh, crossing out jig that I use just to uh, uh, mark up the crossings before cutting them out with a piercing saw. Pretty low tech but it does the job very nicely. It's a little tip for when you're crossing out a wheel, getting the centre boss or for that matter any, um, any circular uh, pattern that you're filing from a, a central hole position, you can uh, use what's called a filing button. So. I just turn these up from a piece of steel. Sometimes I harden them, sometimes I don't. In this instance, I haven't. It's kind on your files if you don't. And one-off use, you don't need to worry about hardening it anyway. Um, so what you do then is you just file down to uh, just kiss the, uh, the button and uh, you will end up with a nice circular filed finish, uh, which I haven't done yet, obviously. Uh, so that's the next job. Here's the completed wheel. Crossed out, 100 teeth cut, and that will shortly be fitted to the corresponding pinion. This is a um, pinion again that I've just uh, made. Uh, this is, the machining is all complete on this now, but I just need to uh, harden it and then temper it and then uh, polish it up, ready to fit to the wheel. Just a little reminder that I'm planning on building this, uh, this kit and I'm going to do it on uh, as a live stream on, uh, on YouTube. And I'm thinking of doing it this Sunday, so it'll be later on this uh, uh, this Sunday at, uh, I'm thinking, half past one uh, English time. So if you're interested in building along or following along, then look out for a live stream, half past one on Sunday. Uh, that's this coming Sunday. I think a few of you have ordered one of these kits, so uh, so perhaps one or two of you will be uh, building along in real time. So it shouldn't take us too long, and it's just a fun little thing. It's uh, nothing to be taken too seriously. being, you know, without it doing damage to that frame there. 
uh, and then you learn the methods uh, for that. So it's uh, yeah, didn't suit it. Yeah, it didn't suit everybody. Some people enjoyed it, and others come and try it and say no, it's not for me really. Yeah, yeah. Take six months to, um, to become comfortable just yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to hold it, perhaps, um, and let's have a look at the big bells. <laughs> you see the bells? Yeah. by Joyce's of Whitchurch and is now maintained by Smiths of Derby who took over Joyce's some years ago. Uh, it was installed in about 1900 and 
at that stage was driven by uh, large weights uh, on wires that were had to be wound up each week and uh, until that continued to 1976 when that was replaced by electric motors so we don't now have to wind the little thing up every week it keeps itself wound up uh, the clock runs two faces one facing out on the church street one facing out towards the town and uh, it used again until things got changed or improved it used to uh, chime at the hour we've taken the chiming off that it is the chiming is now done separately by a satellite controlled uh, uh, computer uh, uh, arrangement that uh, stri this strikes the hour so the striking of the hour has absolutely nothing to do with the clock that you're looking at at the moment um, however the, the clock at the moment is it keeps going it gets maintained annually by Smith's um, and it keeps very good time and we hope it will carry on for another hundred years the mixture to be taken as before that, that was found in, in, in I mean, it obviously being used as a candlestick and it, it was found it, it, in the debris under the bells when we yeah. pull it along with um 20 weights um a bit of a bit of a beaker um not much else of any consequence